register on track for the Faculty of Computer Science. My name is Catherine, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm really, really excited to be here with you tonight and help support you um, to register and really welcome you to DAO um, and kind of hopefully get you a bit excited for September. And so just a few things that is a Q&A function. So if you have questions as we're going along, I'd encourage you to pop them in the Q&A. Uh, when you ask that question, it will be private. And so the only people that will be able to see your question are the panelists. Um, and we'll, we'll save those questions until the end. And that way, everyone kind of gets a chance to hear the answer to them. But as you're going along, if you do have questions, feel free to pop them in the Q&A. This session is recorded and I will be emailing a copy of the recording and the slides in the next few days to you as well. So you're gonna have access to these afterwards. And so well, let's get going. The first thing I would like to do is a land acknowledgement. And so Dalhousie is located on Mi'kmaq, the ancestral and unceded ter territory of the Mi'kmaq. And we are all treaty people. We recognize that African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched that part of Mi'kma'i, known as Nova Scotia, for over 400 years. Um, I gave a little introduction about who I am, but once again, my name is Catherine, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm a student success advisor at the Bissett Student Success Center. I'm also a Dalhousie alum, so I graduated from Dalhousie with a Bachelor of Science in Biochemistry and Psychology. And just to give you a bit of an insight into who I am, I have like my headshots, that's what I look like. And then in the top right, I have a picture of one of my cats, Lola, who is just basking in the sun. Um, and then on the bottom right, I have Bambi, who is really kind of taking shade under the chairs. And then in the left, I just have a picture of me gardening. I really enjoy gardening and it's kind of the time for things to start growing and getting them outside. And so if you see me wandering around on campus in September, I would really, really love it if you ask me how my veggies are doing. And hopefully in September, I can say I've eaten at least one thing that I have grown. That's my main goal for the summer. And I hope we can have a conversation about it when I see you on campus in September. And so a little bit about where I work. I work at the Bissett Student Success Center and we support you for career services. So we can help with your resume and your cover letter, um, interview prep, we have career counseling. We then have studying for success. So whether you're straight from high school, you've taken a break, you um, are coming from a different institution, our Studying for Success team can help you develop skills to be successful academically here at Dow. And then we have peer advisors. And so they're here to support you with the career services um, and help with those career questions as well. And this is our agenda for the evening. So the first thing that we're gonna do is welcome you to Dow and give you a bit more info. And then we're really gonna focus on those four steps that you need to do to help prepare for registration day on June 8th. And then we're gonna more broadly cover some other supports for success for your time here at Dow. And so the first thing I'd like you to like to do is welcome you. I have a video here from my team at the Bissett Student Success Center and a bit of a message for you. Welcome to So I hope you were able to hear that, but that is just kind of a half of the excitement that we all have um, in September. And so we're all super excited to welcome you. The vibes are really fun in September. Everyone is excited. It's, it's really, really an exciting time. And so welcome. And so we have some questions ahead to just kind of think about of what are you excited about um, when you're thinking about coming to Dow? What maybe drew you to Dell? Why did you decide to apply here? And then are there any challenges you're anticipating? Anything that you think you may need support for? And can we help identify some of those supports now to, to help make sure that, that that initial start is the most successful it can be? And then there are lots of different ways to kind of make the most out of your time at Dell either volunteering or working or sports, um, things in the classroom. 
And so what do you want to do alongside of your degree to get the most out of your experience? And I have here, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I have Lauren here tonight who can maybe share a little bit about um, what they're doing here at Dal and if they have any advice for you. Hi, everyone. So my name is Lauren Timmons, and I'm going into my fourth year of applied computer science. Um, some of my favorite courses that I have done at Dal is in your first year, you have the option to take intro to computer programming course. It's called 1105. You don't have to take this course, but if you don't know how to code, you don't know much about coding, it brings you from like zero to a hundred. And so when you come out of that course at the end of the semester, you'll be the same level as people that might've had previous coding. This is the course that really gave me a lot of confidence in coding. In high school, I took one coding course, but I didn't really know much about computer science. And I know some people who also go into computer science, they don't have a coding background, but they're just very interested in it. So this course really gives you a lot of confidence. It's a little bit sometimes hard at first, but then by the end of it, you really realize like it was really like your ABCs, your one, two, threes. And the cool part about when I when you do this course is in your second and third year, you can and fourth year, you can actually go back and be a TA and a marker. And so you can help other students. So this year I was a TA for the year. So I got to go in and help other students and really relate to like maybe parts they struggled and just help reassure them that when you come out of this course, you're going to be like, wow, I got that under my belt. That was easy. I have so much more confidence now. There's a lot of really cool courses at Dal in computer science and also a lot of fun electives you can take. One of my other favorite courses is a course that you do in applied computer science three times, and it really reflects the industry world. So when you first go into it, you are seen as a junior developer. Then the second time you go into it, you're seen as a senior developer. And then the third time you're seen as like, the development manager or the technical manager. You work on like real world, you work on industry. So one time I was working on a website called Shibakto Net Society, where we worked on a website that helps people get Wi-Fi if they are lower income. This year I made a web scraper for Reddit and Twitter to help different professors at university show how housing crisis and mental health are relating to each other to help them try and publish a paper for the government. Um, so it's really cool that even though you're in school, even though you're a student, you actually get to have an impact on society through computer science. Um, some advice that I always give people is when you're going to university, it can be scary and everyone around you is scared too and can be shy but always just say yes to everything. Like sometimes I would be asked to do certain events, volunteer at things, join clubs. And even though I didn't really 100% wanna do it, maybe I didn't have a friend doing it with me, just always say yes, because you never know where it can lead you. A little story example of this is when I was in my first and second year, I would volunteer at events like these and also open houses and talk to incoming students. Then this year in my third year, it actually became my job. So even though, again, I'm a student, I got to work as a TA to help other students. But then I also am on an outreach team at Dalhousie um, where we actually go to different high schools and different events and get to talk about computer science as a job. So there's so much opportunity to make money while you're still in school. Another really fun thing I said yes to that I wasn't really sure about was intramurals. Um, intramurals is really cool because you get to be on a team with people in different faculties and doing different degrees. So it's a really easy way to make friends with people all across campus. And sometimes you'll even, even be in electives with them, which is really fun. So I definitely encourage everyone to do intramurals. They have it for almost every sport in the fall, in the winter, in the spring. Um, some of the involvement I've been with Dal is a club called WITS. So women in computer science, they have um, women in, yeah, women in computer science, they have usually meetings every week, but then they also have things like movie nights, snack nights, study nights. It's a good place to meet friends, people in your faculty, find a support system. There's also a club for basically anything anything you're interested in or involved in. And if there's not a club, you can actually make one yourself. So that's also really cool because you have the power to really, anything you wanna do, you can actually make come to life at Dow. 
So my biggest thing going into Dell is just go in with an open mind and just always say yes to things because you'll never know what it could have led to if you didn't do it. And if you don't like it, then you know that and you already did it and tried it. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Lauren. I think you're right. Like there are so many different ways you can explore and get involved. And it's a great time to figure out what you like to do and what you don't like to do and really just jump in there. Um, and so, yeah, I'd reiterate what Lauren said, just give things a go. We have um, the Society and Volunteer Expo at the end of September and the end of January. So that's a great time for you to really explore what's available to you and what you may be interested in. Um, and here with us today, we also have the Undergraduate Recruitment and Community Engagement Manager, Neha, just to hear, to welcome you and say a few words as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Neha, and I'm the Undergrad Recruitment Manager, as Catherine said. Um, sorry, I joined the, the call a bit late. Um, essentially, though, my role is to just make you feel comfortable about your decision coming to Dell. And if you have any questions, then to help you get the answers to those so that when you do come to Dell in the fall, um, you feel ready and confident to join us. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sharing my screen and just bear with me. Here we go. Um, and so the other folks that we have who unfortunately weren't able to join tonight, but are undergraduate student advisors. And so they're another wonderful resource, particularly when you're looking at your academics and course selection and really navigating your degree. Um, they're a fantastic support to have. And so I've put that email in here as well. And I'm sure they'll be in touch with you too. And so now we're going to move on to kind of the big chunk of today in those kind of four steps. So first, we're going to look at what you need to do before you begin um, registering for courses, so what you need to do to be prepared. And dal.ca forward slash registration that we have here on the screen is going to be your main source of information concerning registration. So if you remember nothing else from this webinar, you don't watch it again, I'd encourage you to write down this link, bookmark it, save it, take a screenshot, um, but something because this link is really important. Everything that we go over today, um, all of that key information is going to be found here. So they have quick videos on how to register. The recordings will be posted to this page. It has important information um, about how to register, how to drop a course, um, all things that you need to know as a new student. And so we're really looking at that step one um, for this part before you begin. So there are a few things before you start picking courses that you need to do. The first one is to make sure that you've to pay your $200 admissions deposit. So that can be done on dell.ca forward slash congratulations. Um, this confirms your seat and allows you to actually register on registration day. You want to activate your net ID and password at password.dal.ca. Um, this allows you to log into Dal Online where you're going to register for courses. You want to set up your Dal email at dal.ca forward slash email. Um, because your email is a great tool and a lot of the things that we send to you over your summer are sent to your Dal email. As things like the new to Dal, so orientation information, um, things about your courses, will all be sent to your DAO email. So I would encourage you to check that at least twice a week during the summer, and then at least once a day once you, once you start as a student. I then have our important dates, so dal.ca forward slash dates. So, so you can kind of know when the exam period is, when study breaks are, when the last day to add drop classes, things like that. And then we have our new student checklist at dal.ca forward slash new students. And this just helps you kind of get prepared and get thinking about um, starting. And so net ID is going to be a term that you'll hear a lot through your time at Dow. And so I want to take a minute and explain what it means. You can find your net ID by going to password.dal.ca and clicking activate your net ID. Your net ID is used for logging into Dow online and your Dow housing email account and booking sites and spaces on campus. It's the first two letters of your name minus the vowels 
followed by numbers. So mine starts with CT because my name is Catherine. And your net ID is different to your student ID. The student ID, which is sometimes called your B00 number, your BOO number, your banner number, um, this can be found on your acceptance letter. And this is typically how um, what staff use to kind of look you up. So if you met with an undergraduate student advisor, they may use your B00 number to see what classes you are in, for example. And so your B00 number, sometimes also would be your B01 number, is typically what's used on more official correspondence and kind of for staff and faculty. And your net ID is what you use to access different softwares and spaces on campus. Um, and both are really important. So you want to make sure that you set up your net ID before registration day on June 8th. And so that's what you need to do before we start jumping into finding your courses, which I always think is the more exciting bit. And so when you're thinking about finding your courses, you want to think about um, what subjects interest you. So maybe this is a subject that you have enjoyed in high school or something that you're more interested in learning more about, something you want to explore. Maybe you've developed some passions that you want to learn more about. Um, and then what type of learner are you? Do you want your classes in a row? Do you prefer mornings or evenings? And how do you want to structure your day? And so this is partly thinking, maybe you wanna have things in the morning or the evening, but also what other commitments do you have that you need to have time for during your day? And with that and thinking of those other commitments, it comes to workload. And so one thing that you might wanna think about is how many courses you would like to take here at Dow. And so we use two terms. We use full-time and we use full course load. So full-time, um, to be a full-time student, you need to be taking a minimum of nine credit hours. So this is roughly three courses because most courses at Dow are three credit hours. And being a full-time student is required for certain things. For example, it may be required if you have a student visa or if you're a varsity student, if you're living in residence or if you have a student loan, those are things that may require you to be full-time. So that would be nine credit hours per semester. Whereas a full course load is 15 credit hours, which is five, five three credit hour courses per semester. And this is kind of the traditional way of completing your degree. So if you want to complete your degree in four years, it's typically five classes in the fall, five classes in the winter for the four years you're here at now. But there are lots of different ways to complete your degree. And everyone's degree and structure can look different. And so some things to consider when you're thinking about your workload is, do you want to graduate in four years? Do you need to graduate in four years? How difficult do the courses seem to you? How do you feel about preparing five different exams um, for midterms or for finals? And then what are your other kind of commitments? So you're, yes, you're a student, but there are lots of other things going on. And so do you have a job? Do you volunteer? Are you maybe taking care of someone? And so what other things do you have going on in your life while you're a student that you may need to account for as well? So some, some things to think about um, when picking your courses and how many courses. And I will say, reach out to your advisors in computer science, so that undergrad.cs at dal.ca, um, to really understand what's gonna be the best fit for you and have that conversation about workload with them. And now this, a lot of the information here tonight is gonna be geared towards incoming first year students. Um, but we likely have some transfer students here in the audience as well. And so I just want to touch on that. If you are a transfer student um, from a different institution, I would encourage you, if you haven't already, to apply for your transfer credits. So the sooner you do that, the sooner you'll hear back. And registration is open for transfer students now. And so if you have transfer credits, you can actually register now. Um, so I would encourage you to, to do that as well. You don't have to wait for your transfer credits to be approved to be able to register, but you may need those credits to be able to register in a course if there are prerequisites. I will say if you, if you need support on this, if you are a transfer student, I would encourage you to connect with the undergrad at CS 
www.dal.ca and, and talk to them about what it looks like with your transfer credits. And then new to DAL orientation is open for everyone. And so it's available for transfer credit for transfer students too. And I would encourage you to engage in that um, either in September or in January, depending on when you come. So as we move on to step two, um, we're back at that registration website, as I told you, that important link you want to hold on to. And you are going to go to find your courses and then click the course planning worksheets kind of highlighted on the screen. Once you're there, you're going to go to computer science and then you can go to click either the Bachelor of Computer Science or Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. If you are part of the Truro Start Programme, your um, information is housed under the Faculty of Agriculture. And I would encourage you to watch the Faculty of Agriculture's Register on Track session too. And so when you click on that link for the Bachelor of Science, uh, Computer Science or Applied Computer Science, it brings you to this wonderful website, the First Year Computer Science website. And so on this website, we have teaser course videos. So you can get a, kind of an experience of what to expect for your classes. There is a list of required first year classes that you need to take, and they have some frequently asked questions, so some FAQs. So I'm sure if you have a question, lots of other people have had that similar question, and you can probably find the answer under those FAQs on the side. If you have any information and any questions about this, again, reach out to the Faculty of Computer Science Advisors at undergrad at cs.dal.ca. And so this is another um, just screenshot of the computer science website. It's from a little lower down where it outlines what required courses that you need. And so if you're in computer science or applied computer science, you need to take this list of courses. And then they have broken down if you're in applied or computer science, what you need to take depending on your program. And so you can use this list to be able to then register. So once you figure out what courses you need from this list, You've taken a look at maybe what electives you need. Um, you can use that information to create your schedule. And so that is our next step. You've got to create that schedule. And so things to ask yourself when you're creating your schedule is, what time of day do I learn best? What time of day do I study best? Do I want my classes back to back? Have I made time for the breaks and lunch? Um, do you want to take an online course? And if it is online, do you have a space, kind of quiet time and space to focus on that course? And will you be working as well? What are your other commitments going on and when are they? And so the other thing you'll see is each course typically will have a different format. And so there's three possible components of a course. The first one is LEC, so that's lecture. And this is the main point of contact with the professor. It's often the professor presenting to a large group of students. It's less one-on-one -on -one and more kind of a large group setting. And I always explain it as if you think of a kind of a, a movie or a TV show where someone is in university, that typical, the lecture hall where they're being talked at, that is typically what kind of a lecture looks like. And then we have a lab. And so that lab is typically run by a teaching assistant, so a TA, and potentially Lauren here, who's a TA, it's more hands-on learning and it's a smaller group of students. And so it often kind of complements what you're learning in your lecture. And then we have a tutorial, and that's also called a toot. And this again is a smaller section of students from your lecture. It's more kind of discussion-based or problem solving. It's based on the lecture content and it is run by a teaching assistant or TA typically. And some classes will have a lecture. Some classes will have a lab only. Some classes will have a combination of lecture, lab and tutorial. And so when you're registering, you want to make sure that you're registering for all components um, of the course. And how do you know what components there are? You do that by looking at the timetable. And so this is the academic timetable. And up here we have the link dal.ca forward slash timetable. And when you come to this page, 
the timetable holds all of the logistical information about a course. For example, the day, the time, the location, type of class, all of this information can be found on the timetable and all of it's available now. So you can go ahead and look at that um, first year science website. You can look at the timetable now and build that schedule. And so the first thing it'll prompt you is what terms do you want to look at? And for this example, I've highlighted the fall and the winter term. And then it'll ask what locations. And so I've got Halifax, online and others. And so this gives me the most options, the most um, kind of choices. And then in the subject, you're able to type in what subject you're looking for. And it will look something like this when you pick a subject. So I pulled up a CS intro to computer programming class um, just to kind of run through with you. And so the first thing that we have here circled in blue is CS CI 1105. This is, this is the course title. So it's intro to computer programming in that blue circle. The next thing you have in green is this play button. So it's that black triangle with the circle. Um, if you press this, it brings you to the course description. So it gives you more information about the course and things that you need to know. And then over here on the right, we have the semester. So this particular course that we're looking at is in the fall semester. So from September to December. And then over here, we have the notes section. So the notes section is important because often some really useful information will be held in the notes section. And so it's always good to check that out. Here we can see at the bottom, you have a note um, that's saying who this course is restricted to. And then we see we have an S and this means that this course needs special permission to register. That's what the S means. And then we have the R. And if we click on the R, it pulls up this page. So the R stands for restricted. And it says this course, it's restricted from students in the Bachelor of Commerce Co-op and Bachelor of Management. That means if you're in the Bachelor of Commerce Co-op or Bachelor of Management, you're not able to take this class. So it's always a good idea to check the notes and to check the restricted, just to make sure that you're able and eligible to take the class. The next thing that we have is that CRN. And so the CRN stands for course reference number. And each section has its own CRN. So when I'm talking about registering for a lab and a lecture and all of that, you'll have a CRN for a lab section that you like, a CRN for a lecture section that you like. And that number will kind of be identified through the CRN. Next, we have the section. So this sandy color here at the top, that's um, lecture. So you can see lect under section. This kind of mint green color is a lab. You can see here it says lab. And then this class doesn't have a tutorial, but I've highlighted just at the bottom what it would look like. It's gonna be in a bit of a blue color and it's gonna say toot. And so what you wanna see is underneath the the title here, you want to pick um, one of each color. So if underneath underneath the, the title, we have that sandy color, so elect, and we have a lab. And so you wanna make sure you get a lecture, a CRN for a lecture that you like, and a CRN for a lab that you like. If there was a tutorial there as well, you'd wanna make sure you'd have the CRN for the tutorial too. Next, we have your credit hours. So like I said, a typical course is three credit hours, and that's how you can find that information listed here. This section has days. So when the course is being held, what days of the week? Um, Monday is M, Tuesday is T, Wednesday is W, and now Thursday is R. So if you see an R, as we can see here, it's actually a Thursday. And then F is Friday. And then we have time. So what time is this class being held? So for example, if you were gonna register for this course, 
say you liked this particular one, you wanted to do Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 11.30, you're then going to record the CRN 10737. And then you would go down and you'd pick, do the similar thing for the lab. So say you wanted your lab, you like this section Fridays at 10 to 11.30, you would pick the CRN 10742. The next thing that we have is your location. So here we have the first thing, which is the campus that it's on. So this particular lecture section is on Studley campus and then the building and the room number. And over here in yellow, we have the enrollment information. So that first column is max. So that's the maximum number of students that can be in the class. And then we have current. So that's the current number of students registered in that class. We have available. So the number of seats that are available. And we have waitlist. So if their course is a waitlist, that column would let us know how many people are in the waitlist. And then we have percentage full. So how full is that class? And then along the side, we have instructor. So there we have the instructor's information. Um, if you click on that, it'll bring you to their contact information. And so if you have questions about the course, want to get to know the professor a little more, you can use that contact, the instructor part there. And so that is the timetable. And so we're gonna imagine if you press that play button, the description here, it's gonna maybe bring you to this. So these are for different courses, um, but I just wanted to highlight a few things that you may see when you're looking at a description. So the first thing that you see on the left is Religious Studies 2120. And so this course at the bottom that's circled has a cross listing. And so what a cross listing means is that this course is shared with another department. And so in this case, this Religious Studies course is shared with History, Early Modern Studies, History of Science and Technology. And so they're exactly the same course, same room, same professor, it's just a different course name. And so if you were trying to register in Religious Studies 2120 and it was full, you could then try and register for HIST 20, uh, 2990, Early Modern Studies 2360, or History of Science and Technology 2120, because they're all the same course. On the other side here, the first thing that we have for this Math 1000 is prerequisites. So a prerequisite is a course or a requirement that you need to complete before taking this particular course. And so in higher level courses, you'll often see a prerequisite being like a 1000 level course offered at Dow. Because, and even if it doesn't have a prerequisite, often those 2000 level courses or higher, assume that you've experienced writing and studying at a university level. And then the other thing that we have here is an exclusion. And so an exclusion means that you can't get credit for both. And so the courses have been determined too similar in content to one another for you to be able to get credit for both. In this case, if you take Math 1000, you're not going to get credit for taking Math 1215 or 1280 or 1500 because only one of these courses will count towards your degree, even though they're different course numbers. And so this really highlights why it's important to take a look at the descriptions to really understand the course and what you need to register and maybe if, it, if it's a good course to take. We also have some online courses. And so we have three types of online courses here at Dow. The first that we have is synchronous. And this is a course that requires you to join class online at a specific day and time every week. Those courses are ske scheduled in Atlantic daylight time. We then have asynchronous. So these courses don't require you to be online at a specific day or time. There will be deadlines and material will be posted, but it'll be the student's responsibility to learn. And then we have a combination. And so these courses are delivered both asynchronously and synchronously, kind of a combo. Um, and so sometimes you may have to be at class at specific days and times, but not all of the time, for example. I will say that an asynchronous course does require typically more discipline and time management. So it's something to think about when you're 
your starting at Dalham and what you'd like to take. This is just two examples of how that asynchronous and synchronous may show up on the timetable. So it's under location and it will say online and then the format of the course. The next thing is on the uh, course planning worksheet website um, and on that dal.ca forward slash registration website, um, there is a blank schedule. And so you can use this schedule. It's a fillable PDF to help plan and plot out where your courses are. There's an area at the bottom where you can record the CRNs and you can plan it out to make sure the schedule is looking like what you would like. It's looking good. There's no conflicts. Um, and to help collect those CRNs before June 8th. I will say too, don't forget about winter. So on June 8th, you can register for fall and winter. It's really important that you register for fall and winter on June 8th. And then as you've seen, what do you do if a course is full? So current Dalhousie students are able to register for courses now. They registered in March. And so sometimes a course can fill up either on registration day or before registration day. And if this is the case, when you're selecting your courses and planning your schedule, it's a good idea sometimes to have alternative courses. Um, so for those electives, it's a good idea to have some alternative courses that's going to work with your schedule in case your top choice is full on June 8th. You also may want to have some alternative sections. So as we saw that CSCI 1105, there's a few different lecture time options. And so you may want to think, is there another lecture time that will work with your schedule that you could just kind of have in your back pocket just in case? And so once you've planned out your schedule and it's looking good, you'll want to check your registration status. So dalonline.dal.ca is where you can go to get to Dal Online and to check your registration status. So You'll want to log in using your net ID and password, which is why it's really important that you set that up. And then you're gonna click Web for Students, Registration, and then Prepare for Registration. And then here, you're gonna click Prepare for Registration again and select the term that you're gonna start. So for example, 2024, 2025, fall. And when you press Continue, you should get three green check marks and then that exclamation mark that lets you know what time you can register your time ticket. And so if you don't see those three green check marks, reach out to someone now to make sure that when you're register before June 8th, you have those three green check marks and you are good to go. Okay, so now at this point, if you're watching the recording, you should have picked out your courses, you've explored the first year website, you've activated your net ID, you've checked your registration status online, and you've looked at the first year uh, website, you've planned it out using that blank schedule, and you've created a schedule for fall and winter semester that you like using the timetable, and you've collected all of those course reference numbers, those CRNs, and you're ready to go for June 8th. So on June 8th, so that's a Saturday at uh, 12 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Time, you're going to register. And so you're going to go back to Dal Online. You're going to log in with your net ID and password, and you're going to click Web for Students. You're going to click Registration and then Register for Classes. You're going to click Register for Classes and select the, the first term that you're starting here. So Either if you're starting in September, that would be fall 2024, 2025. Or if you're starting in the winter semester, that would be 2024, 2025 winter. And then press continue. And that's going to bring us to a page that looks like this. And so first off, it'll probably bring you to this section that calls says find class function. You want to ignore that. It's not a great function. And you've already used the timetable to find your courses and collect the CRNs. So you're going to jump right into that enter CRN. And this is where that collecting makes sense. So where we see that number one, this box is where you will add the CRNs. You're then going to press number two, add another. And you're going to keep going and you're going to add all of your CRNs that you've collected for that specific semester. 
And then you're going to press add to summary when you're done. And in the bottom right of your screen, there's a summary section. When you add to summary, it's going to appear here. And so the status is pending. And you want to make sure that everything along the side says web registered. And here are your courses that you've picked. And then you want to press submit. So if you want to check to see if you've registered, here we have the maximum number of credit hours, so 15, and it'll tell you the registered credit hours. So if you've registered with five, you should, it should say then 15 credit hours there. And when you press submit, you should have all of these statuses here change to registered. They'll be green and you'll be good to go. But sometimes errors come up. So it does happen. Um, don't be alarmed if you see it. We're going to talk a little about what potential errors can come up and what you can do about it. So these are some possible errors. The first one is available seats held, the waitlisted, waitlist is full. So this is letting us know the waitlist is full right now for this class. Um, if this is the case, keep checking the timetable and register in a backup. So Maybe this course has multiple lectures, and so maybe you can pick a different lecture. Um, or maybe it's an elective and you can pick something else instead. Next, we have a uh, section full 18 on the waitlist. Select waitlisted action and hit submit to add yourself to the waitlist. Um, and so on here, you can add yourself to the waitlist and it's going to, um, you're going to be number 19 on the wait list. And then hopefully you'll be able to get a spot. Again, I would encourage you join the wait list, but then register an alternative too. And then at the bottom, we have missing required course or grade, review course description for prerequisite. And that's just letting us know we need to go back to the timetable and make sure that we have the prerequisites. Uh, and then if you do have that error that says waitlisted, this is what you're going to do. You can go to that status where it would have said web registered and you can change it to waitlisted and then press submit. And then it will appear and it'll say waitlisted. So it's your responsibility to keep checking the prepare to register page to see if you to see if space has become available. And what do you do if a course fills up? It happens sometimes. Um, and so it's a good idea to have a backup course or a backup section in mind. Um, keep checking the timetable because it changes over the summer. And so even if a course is full now, it could maybe open up later. Uh, wait lists do exist. So for some courses, you can add yourself to a wait list and you'll get a spot if one becomes available. And then you will complete your degree over multiple years. So if it's something that doesn't work this year, um, it's not maybe a required course, then it's something you could take it another year. But if this happens, you can connect with um, the advisors in computer science to talk about what to do. And so they can help support you there. Once you've registered in your courses, back on that, that page, you'll want to check the bottom left corner to see your schedule. And so you'll want to make sure that nothing's overlapping, that your schedule looks like that blank schedule you created. And so here is just an example of what it would look like if you had a time conflict. So we can see that German is overlapping with the differential calc and something's got to move. And so the system will let you register for a course with a time conflict. And so you just want to double check your schedule to make sure everything is looking good. And when you've done all that for the fall, you want to go back, change it to the winter and register for the winter semester. And just remember one thing that helps is the fall CRNs start with a one and the winter CRNs start with a two. And if you have any problems, there's also a help center. So there's a Dell Online Help Center when you click the help button. And they have so many fantastic videos on how to register, how to check your registration, how to read the timetable. They're pretty short and they cover a lot of what we've covered today. And so you can check out that help center and those videos are available now. So you can go and even watch them before June 8th. And so that's like the registration process. We've gone through those four steps. 
And I would encourage you to take some time and explore that website, fill it out and help to prepare you for June 8th. And now we're going to take a look at kind of the supports that are here for you. And so there are lots of resources and people here to help you, Adele, to form the best experience. And so we're all excited to welcome you. We're all excited for you to come to Adele. And so if you have questions, if you need support, reach out, connect with us. Um, that's what we're here to help with. So the first thing that we have is financial services. They have their contact information and financial services is a branch of the registrar's office that can help students navigate scholarships, bursaries and student loans. They can help you budget for university and access community services to assist you with your finances and you can make an appointment with them. And the registrar's office, we have their contact details and they help you with registration and any errors that you may come up, they can support you with. They're also the folks that processed your application. They do transcripts and transfer credits. Um, as I said, that the financial team is there and they also do confirmation of enrollment. And then we've talked a little about the advisors already. So their email is undergrad at cs.dial.ca, but they're here to make, um, to give you a successful transition to university life at Dow to help you understand your program requirements and your academic regulations, to help pick courses, map out strategies to achieve your career and educational goals, and develop action plans that deal with any difficulties that may arise. We've touched a little on career services, but they support with um, the job search and application, career exploration, and career counseling. Your professors are another great resource for you, and so they can help if you have questions with an assignment or want clarification. They're also great if you want to learn more about their research or opportunities to get involved, and you also can just chat to them to get to know them too. We then have studying for success, which I mentioned at the start, but they can help you develop those study skills to help you be successful here at Dow. They have one-on-one -on -one appointments and they also have workshops and tutors as well. So a great resource throughout your time here. We then have the writing center. And so they support students at any level, any field of study in one-on-one -on -one appointments. And it includes to discuss written work and provide feedback at any stage of that writing process. So whether it's pre-writing and you, you just have a bit of an idea to like revisions and you're done. So they're a fantastic resource to use throughout your time here. We have the Black Student Advising Center for um, any students of African descent to help identify goals and pathways through your post-secondary career at Dell. And they can help um, develop skills to make you successful learners. They have mentorship programs, study skills, and writing there. We then have the Indigenous Student Center um, for Indigenous students, and they have tutoring and study skills, cultural activities, networking opportunities, and scholarships and bursary support out of their center too. We have student health and wellness. So this is a collaborative health team made up of doctors, nurses, social workers, psychiatrists, you can have medical appointments here. You can access same day counseling. You can meet with a social worker. You can get flu shots, prescriptions, and medical testing when you're here, here at Dow. We then have our Heart 2S LGBTQIA bus advisor, and they are available for appointments for any reason, large or small. And this includes accessing and referrals to gender affirming care, seeking support around name or gender marker changes, either at Dow or provincially, navigating the Dow services, support with advocacy, and just someone to be able to talk to you about your experiences here at Dow. We have the International Student Center or the International Center. Um, they can help explore like exchange and study abroad opportunities. They assist with um, immigration, student visa, visas, uh, filing taxes, if ESL support, and they can connect you with the international community on and off campus. We then have the Student Accessibility Center, and so they do one-on-one -on -one advising to 
help support you and reduce barriers to your learning into the classroom and help you access places on campus. And so they can help advocate on your behalf and alongside of you. And so if accessibility is something that you think you may need, maybe you've had um, similar supports in high school, I would encourage you to reach out to them now. So the sooner you can reach out to them and put a plan in place, um, kind of I would say the better you'll feel in September once things are set up and you're good to go. They also have their own orientation. And so once you kind of get connected with them, you get, you're able to go to that orientation too. We then have the bookstore. And so the bookstore is where you're gonna be buying your textbooks um, and your course material. You can actually look up all of your course material online through their website. You can order some of your books ahead of time. And if you're living in residence, have it delivered to your residence room. And you pick up school supplies and they have lots of fun dial gear there as well. Um, here we have the Dow mobile app. And so this app is great. You can meet your classmates, you can ask questions, but it also alerts you about campus closure and snow days. And they have a, a map on there too. So I'd encourage you to, to get the Dow mobile app. You can find it on whatever app store you have and kind of get connected that way. This is our Instagram handle. And so if you want to follow us, we share some useful tips around registration, but career services, studying for success and the writing center um, to help support you. And then here, just some more information about registration day. So the deposit, that $200 admission deposit is required before registration, and it can take up to 48 hours to process. So something that you want to do now um, you'll also need to activate your NET ID and create a password before you register. So again, something you want to get ahead of. And then the registrar's office is here to support you on Saturday, June 8th. So they're open from 11.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Atlantic Daylight Time on June 8th to answer any questions and troubleshoot those registration errors that may come up. They can reach by phone, by live chat, or by email. And then here are our next steps. And so dal.ca forward slash new students has the new student checklist, helpful tips, information about orientation and new to Dal, um, and family and friends info. So I would encourage you to check that out. And I will say, I hope you got that kind of message from all of the supports, but there are lots of supports, lots of people available here to help you at Dal. And so if you have questions, if you're looking for something, I would really encourage you to reach out and get connected. We're all here to help you and we're all excited to support you. So if you have questions, if you want to get in touch, please do so. And that really is the end of my information for today. So we do have a survey that I'd love for you to complete out. I have the QR code. Um, on the screen, but there's also going to be a link that's emailed out to you with the slides and you can enter to win $200 on your Dow card. Um, and so now we're just going to switch and answer some questions. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm um, going to take a look. So um, the first question is, I will be joining in 2024 September. So what times would I pick in the academic calendar? Yeah, absolutely. If you're joining in September, 2024, you would pick 2024, 2025, fall. And then when you're looking for winter, you pick 2024, 2025, winter. So you wanna make sure you register for fall and winter. So you'd select both terms. Someone else has asked, um, how are students already registered before the course registration date? That's because um, registration day for incoming students opens June 8th, but for current DAO students, registration opened in March. And so they've been able to register for a few months and that's why it's filled up. Someone asked, is it possible to apply for residence before June 8th? Yes, absolutely. So if you're interested in res residence, I'd encourage you to 
to do it as soon as possible. There are limited spaces, and so that's something you can do now. Okay. Um, the next question is, if there is a room in your schedule, would you be allowed to pick a sixth course or can you only do five max? Typically, um, a student can only take five and you need kind of special permission to be able to take six. So if a six is something you'd like to do, you can connect with your advisor, but it's typically five and then you would need special permission. Um, someone asked, what is the link for the registration status? So to find your registration status, you would just log into DAL online. You would have access to do that yourself. Um, and that uh, login is DAL online. Ooh, I'm going to find that for you. DALonline.dal.ca. So you can go to that link and find your registration status. Um, the recording, so if you've missed something while I was going through it, um, or you missed part of this, the recording is going to be emailed to you afterwards along with a copy of the slides. So you will have access to everything we've gone over today. Um, for computer science students, how do we know what courses to register for? Yeah, so the courses that you're registering for, you can find them all on that um, computer science first year registration page. So that website will have the information you need to pick and, and figure out what courses. Um, does each class have different times when it is taught in a day? Yeah, so each lecture section will typically have like a different time or a different day they, they teach it at. And that means then you can pick and really figure out your schedule yourself. Um, someone asked, are all the courses in the timetable mandatory? No, so the, the timetable just houses all of the information for all of the courses. Um, you can, you only need to take one lecture and one lab or one, one component of each for the course that you're looking to take. You don't have to take kind of every course that you see. Um, you want to check your registration status before registering for classes, so you can go ahead and check your registration status now. Um, Someone asked if they can opt out for the winter session um, as they've registered for summer 2024. I would encourage you to connect with the advisors in computer science. Uh, I'm not sure what that would look like or if there's maybe any classes you would still still need, but I would I would connect with them just to explore that. If you don't hear from them, um, before registration day, then I would encourage you to register for courses for winter. You have until I would say mid-January to drop them. So you can always register them and then um, drop them a little later. But I would always say register and then you can always drop. I'm just sharing. Um, just to add to that one piece as well, um, I'm just going to send that to an advisor and someone should be uh, getting back to you on that specific question. Wonderful. Um, that person was anonymous. Um, I'm not sure if you wanted maybe them to reach out with with their contact info, um, but maybe you can. Yeah. That. If you have any questions, or or actually, sorry, going back to what Catherine said, the undergrad at at cs.dal.ca is the best one to reach an advisor and they typically respond within two days or so. Um, I'm just looking through the other questions to see what else we have. Um, 
Someone asked about uh, the minor in math and how that will fit into their schedule. That is a great question. And I would encourage you to connect with the um, undergraduate advisors in computer science to navigate what that's going to look like in your first year in your degree. Um, it is possible to schedule a meeting, not with me, but with an advisor in um, computer science. And so if you reach out to that undergraduate adult at cs.dal.ca, um, you can connect with them that way, but they also have a booking form where you're able to book a five minute appointment with them that way as well. Um, I'm just sorry, just going through. How do we know if we got into the course or not? Yeah, so the way that you know if you got into the course is when you press that submit button and it changes, it should change from pending to registered. So if it says registered, it means that you're in the course and that's what you got into. Um, it'll also come up in the box in the corner that you have a tick as well. Um, if you if someone wanted to change degrees, when typically would someone do it before the school term, gem, during or other? So I'd say if you're looking to change degrees and you're not enjoying the degree that you're currently in, I would reach out as soon as possible. Um, it's always good to figure out what you may need for the different program, what you're interested in to explore. You then can have the conversation with the admissions person to figure out when best, when is the best time. But I would say answer to reach out as, as soon as possible. And I'm going to give you the, the contact information of who to connect with. For that person that is asking um, about switching degrees, I think it was an anonymous question. Um, are you looking to switch between, are you thinking about switching between uh, BCS and BACS or completely to computer science or completely out of computer science? Um, maybe we can answer some other questions till they, till they are able to respond. Yeah. Uh, say, for example, you select a course and want to change it before the semester starts. Is that possible? When can I do that and how? Absolutely. You are able to change your courses. Um, what you would do is if we go back to the registration page um, where the drop down option where you want web, web registered. I'm just going to pull up the screenshot so I can show you. Okay, so you should be able to see that. If you press this button, this arrow here, um, you'll have an option that will say drop. And so you'd go ahead, you'd press drop and then submit. And that's how you drop the course before. And then you could add a different course there as well. So it absolutely can change. Um, and then I think I may just quickly show everyone the computer science website again, just to run through that, because I see some questions about that. And then I think that may be the end of our questions for tonight. So if you go to dal.ca forward slash registration, you're going to go down to find your courses and then the course planning worksheets. And then along the side here, you can click Faculty of Computer Science and we'll go with Computer Science. And this is the, the page that you'll come up and see. And so from here, it has some information about the teaser videos. And then here we have the required courses for both degrees. And then what you need to take for applied computer science only, and what you would need to take for the Bachelor of Computer Science. And so that information is there. It looks like the applied computer science, you have electives. And so that means that these are courses you can pick um, and they, they aren't necessarily like set courses you can choose from. And then you should be able to click that degree checklist 
and it'll bring you to some more information about your degree over your time here at Dow that you can fill out. And then same with the um, Bachelor of Computer Science as well. Both will come up. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if you have any questions about these, you can reach out to undergrad at CS. Um, yeah. uh, if you're interested in a minor in creative writing, I'm not sure if that's possible, but I would encourage you to reach out to the advisors and see. Um, someone has asked about the science with a lab from the approved list. I'm not quite sure um, where to find that, but that would be a great question to ask the computer science advisors. Okay, so I think that's all of our questions for tonight. And again, I will be emailing you the copy of the recording as well as the slide. So you'll be able to um, come back to this. And in the chat, we do have the contact email for the computer science advisors as well as their appointment booking. So they have um, five minute appointments that you can go ahead and book that way too. So thank you very much. Um, it was lovely to welcome you here tonight, and I hope you have a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are, um, and we're very excited to welcome you here on campus either in September or January. Thank you, everyone. And I'm also just going to put in my email in the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.